What's up everyone? My name is Dear Evergreen and today I'm going to be talking to you about how I produced the song Breakup to Breakthrough on Song Lab episode 3, which is a new series presented by Jubilee. Welcome to Song Lab, a show where our talented Song Lab producers get paired up with musicians and have only two hours to create an original song. If you guys haven't seen the Jubilee video, I will go ahead and link it down below so you can check that out on your own time. This go around, the episode was boyfriend versus girlfriend, so it was two people living in the same house competing against each other which was super, super fun. I got paired up with Brian Chin, who is an amazing vocalist as well as producer. Brian, you will be on Team Evergreen. So before we get going, let's just go ahead and listen to the track and then we can get started. Maybe I feel no pain Sunlight through the rain I tried but you won't change I, 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 I Won't shed no tear, no shade no stress, no fear, no fate Little baby, don't feel no ways Ay, 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 ay I don't regret what you made me Tainted and jaded Endlessly faded uh. I don't regret what I made you One time we still take two We break up to break start off with the bass. The bass here is pretty simple. The only time that it comes in is during the chorus. I have two separate tracks for it. So I have one that is in mono and this is really just going to be the subby part of the sub. <laughs> so if we listen to that, you might not even be able to hear it if you're not on headphones or on speakers, but here it is. And all that this is, is going to be an instance of operator with a square wave and then a sine wave. Basically, the square wave is being routed through the sine wave. I just did an EQ and then I did a saturator with the sinoid fold and then another EQ and then I sidechained that to the kick, compressed it, another EQ, and then set a utility to mono. That's just really making sure that the low end is being cleaned up. And then there is this top layer, which is basically all the same thing, except for it's EQ'd a little differently so that it is not those really subby felt ranges. It's more, it's gonna be more heard, if that makes sense. Up next, we have the drums. During the verse, basically all that's happening is this kick and then kind of a side stick and then that's being layered with a clap. So if we hear those individually, here is the, here's kind of like the side stick. And then if we hear it with the clap, and these two are being EQ'd differently so that where the side stick really shines is where the clap is being ducked. And then instead of a traditional hi-hat, use this like little, little sound. I guess they have it labeled as a coin. I don't know. I thought it sounded cool though. The hi-hat, it's actually, it's got this little delay on it. So if you listen really closely, you can actually hear a very slight delay on either side. And then on the chorus section, we actually have a whole new set of drums. So it's a different kick and a whole different snare. Um, same hi-hat, but just a more complicated pattern, a reverse ride, and I believe that's it. Again, on the chorus, the clap and snare here, they are being EQ'd and layered on top of each other. So one of them we have 
this. And then on the other one, we have this. So you really get the meat from that snare, but then you get the thin kind of shimmer, I suppose, from the clap. <laughs> Up next, let's go ahead and talk about the different synths that are being used. The first is gonna be these chords. So let's go ahead and listen to those. So all that these are is, it's gonna be an instance of Ableton's electric synth. What I went ahead and did was through the RC20 on them and then also isotope trash which is a type of distortion and on the RC20 let's go ahead and see what the heck happened. So I love the preset sad piano so I usually will kind of start there especially with keys and then I'll just kind of work that to where I like it and then I went ahead and actually froze the chords and put them here so that I could have more control over the tails as well as reverse certain parts. So like right here, we have this nice little moment where it reverses in. Other than that, inside of the MIDI, there's a couple of pitch bends. And so if you go into your clip envelope and if you go up here and if you select MIDI control, and then if you select pitch bend, you can actually make these little like divots yourself. And I think it adds a lot of character to a sound, especially when you want it to sound a little like vintage. Then the next synth that comes in is gonna be this operator as well as granulator. Let's go ahead and solo the operator on its own. So what this is, is three sine waves. One of them is pitched normally, one of them is down an octave, and then one is up an octave. One of them is slightly tuned differently than the others to kind of give it a little bit of a warble. There's also a little bit of an LFO on it that is affecting the filter that is on it, so if we turn that up, that's what it sounds like. But there it is, just like so. Adds a little bit of movement, which we love. I've got the spread turned up a little bit, and then I'm running this through a saturator with a sinoid fold, EQing it a bunch, <laughs> and then I just have isotope trash on it and RC20 once again, and then it is being sent off to a short reverb. This is initially what Brian had sent me to write to. He sent in this MIDI, and so what I did was I went ahead and found a sample um, from the caption sample pack on Splice and went ahead and popped that into the granulator. That's how we got this sound. And with this, just got an, e an EQ on it and it's being sidechained to the kick and it's also being sent off to that short reverb. So then the chorus is a little bit different. I use a similar sound to the, the operator instance in the pre. Which to me kind of sounds like a broken guitar or something. And what this is, is it's gonna be, so pretty much the exact same sound. The only difference is that it is being sent through this audio effect rack, which has two chains, one that is panned hard right and one that is panned hard left. These both have an amp on them and the amp is being slightly adjusted differently. So as you can see, one of them is on the rock amp preset and then the other one is on the boost. And then I just kind of went in and slightly fine tuned the knobs to where it sounded cool to me. So essentially what's happening here is the sound on the right hand side is different than the sound on the left which kind of provides this neat textural experience. And then after that, it's just being sidechained to the kick. And looks like I also slapped an RC20 on this as well because I put RC20 on everything. Up next, we have the vocals. Brian made the vocals super easy to work with. Since he's also a producer, he knows how to treat his vocals. So he sent them over pre-processed. I just had to add basically the time-based effects. This is what his vocals sound like. Baby, I feel no pain. Sunlight through the rain. I tried, but you won't change. I, 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 I. On his lead, literally all I had to do, because he took care of pretty much the rest, was just do a little bit of EQ. Because without the EQ, this is what they sound like. Baby, I feel no pain. Sunlight through the rain. And then with the EQ. I tried, but you won't change. I, 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 I. I just thought the EQ was really nice. Give a little boost to that high end because what he sent over felt a little bit dull to me and I just really wanted to liven it up. Aside from that lead vocal, which he he essentially put all the harmonies and everything into that stem. So I didn't even have to worry about it. He also sent over this delay stem, which was great because he kind of automated things himself. He knew how he wanted it to sound. There's a couple of reverse vocal moments. So right in the beginning. 
and then at different transitional moments. These are basically just made via putting a long reverb on the next word that's coming and then freezing and flattening that and reversing it. So that's all that these are. They are reverb tails that are, have been reversed. During the chorus, things get a little bit different. I actually went ahead and took his original demo vocal. So let's actually take the effect off of this. Baby, I feel no pain. Sunlight and no pain. So this was Brian's original demo vocals that he sent over before he wrote lyrics. And I was instantly like, oh, I could totally turn this in to a lead for this chorus. And I did the same trick that I did with that other operator instance earlier. Except this time I used little altar boy and pitched down either side. So if we hear that with everything. Like in past challenges, our director came through and challenged us to use a voice note that was sent in by a listener. What I went ahead and did was took that voice note and put it into a drum rack and sliced it up into a bunch of different notes and then I just kind of randomly played them and I added this echo and automated the dry wet so then that is what this gives us. All of that is just kind of being tucked in the background to add some ambience and there's one moment where it really stands out. It's when she says I was a coward and it's right here. Wait. There was a couple of other transitional elements. There was some white noise and a reverse symbol. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Thank you all so, so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this. If you did, please feel free to give it a thumbs up. And then also, I would love to chat with you guys in the comments. So if you uh, have any thoughts, feelings, or concerns, I would love to hear them. For now, I'm going to go ahead and head out. I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day. And I will talk to you soon.